you can be certain of some things. There are no theological reasons why women should not be ordained in this church. Indeed, there is much to indicate that women can bring to these offices and it gifts. After the historic call by Bishop Hines to include women as priests and bishops, the first wave of faithful and courageous women emerged to offer their gifts. In the Diocese of Texas, that first wave included Dina Harrison. When she felt a call to the ordained ministry and they announced we, we would be moving from Houston to Austin for her to go to seminary, my brother and I said, okay. She'd always been very active in the church and a leader in the church. She was really in the first generation of women to go to seminary. After graduation, Dina served at All Saints Austin. She was called as rector of St. James LaGrange, rector of St. James Conroe, and then Bishop Payne called her to serve as canon to the ordinary. She was in bishop elections several times, and it took a while for everyone to catch up with the reality that we knew that she was destined to be a bishop. She has all the pastoral skills, all the management skills, all the parish skills, and to be able to apply those on a, a wider scale, I think was something she was called to do. Indeed, she was called to share her gifts broadly, and in 2006 was elected the ninth Bishop Suffragan of the Diocese of Texas and the first woman in the Southern United States to be elected to the Episcopate. In recent reflections on her ministry of firsts, Bishop Harrison has said, at the point in history in which we live, the role of the first has fallen to me, but it is not the most important thing. The most important thing is the ministry of Jesus, and the people of the Diocese of Texas have been incredibly supportive, as together we have served God through the church. Of course, being a bishop has all the regular duties associated with it. Visitations, pastoral duties, taking care of the clergy. But mom had the special opportunities to do much more. She chaired the seminary board. She chaired St. Stephen's School. She chaired El Buen Samaritano, St. Luke's hospital system. I'm exhausted just thinking about everything she's done. <laughs> and I haven't even touched on her national and international appointments and the things she's done on a much bigger scale. In addition to the oversight of these institutions, Bishop Harrison was instrumental in the creation of a new one, the Iona School for Ministry. I think the greatest gift of her ministry in the wider church has been her work with the Iona School. When we began the Iona initiative, her vision for that was so uh, clear and her uh, mandate was so strong. She inspired all of us to make that project into a reality. Dina has been instrumental in ensuring that the school is competitive. I understand some 30 dioceses are now partnering with the Iona School, and I'm immensely grateful to Bishop Dina for her leadership in making that possible. Bishop Dina has been a leader in quiet ways in the pension fund, in the House of Bishops, in the Seminary of the Southwest. Dina's impact on Seminary of the Southwest has been immeasurable. She's been responsible in large part uh, for overseeing the vitality and health of the seminary. Her gift has been to really identify good leadership. She's offered leadership in terms of the, uh, the seminary, which has been outstanding to the point that that seminary is now one of the best in the church. And a lot of it is because of Dana Harrison. Bishop Harrison's gifts were expressed in other areas of the church as well. I first got to know Bishop Harrison when she served on the board of Episcopal Belief and Development, which she did for six years. She brought a particular clarity around finance administration. She brought a sense of clarity and an ability to take the numbers and tell a story with those numbers. Many people don't realize that my mom was a mortgage banker. That was her first career. She knows finance, she knows how to read financial statements, she can run accounting programs, she can do all that. 
And it's interesting, she's never considered herself a fundraiser. She says, well, if there's a vision and I can see it, I can tell the story. She's able to articulate that vision to others who get behind her and open their wallets to support that vision. I hate to break it to her, but that is fundraising. Mom, remember that you are a fundraiser. I think one of the most significant things mom did was lead the sale of the St. Luke's hospital system. Not only did she navigate that process, she garnered about a bazillion dollars for the entire system and helped transform that investment into something totally new. And the future of the Episcopal Health Foundation is something to behold and something very exciting to watch. Bishop Harrison is an encourager and has nurtured leadership throughout the church. First time I met Bishop Harrison was um, summer of 2009. I came to interview with her. She was just very warm and welcoming. And I remember leaving here thinking, I really want this job. Bishop Harrison and I have known each other for a very long time. I was supposed to start lay reading. I had to serve at the altar and I needed to get a cassock. I ended up sitting in Bishop Harrison's office saying, uh, Armstead wants me to get this cassock. I've got a little bit of money, but uh, and she said, we'll go find out how much it is. So then I came back and she, she helped uh, with literally purchasing the first vestment I <laughs> ever owned so that I could continue. And I think that part of uh, that experience was that it's an echo of exactly what Dean has been doing her whole ministry, which is helping people make their way in discernment processes and finding their way towards uh, greater ministry in the church. And she did that for me, but of course she's done that for literally hundreds and hundreds of people. She's very dedicated to what she does. She's a role model. She's a strong woman who leads. Uh, she's been present with a voice that has always been heard, that has never been loud or demanding, uh, that has listened deeply to the leading of Jesus. I had the opportunity of traveling with Bishop Harrison in many places in the Anglican Communion where there aren't very many women clergy, never mind women bishops. And so Bishop Harrison's mere presence, and presence as a woman of authority and a woman of compassion and a woman leader, was a very, very important contribution, I think, that she made to the Anglican Communion as a whole. She's kind of the steel magnolia, and I give deep and abiding thanks for her leadership. She's personally been an amazing uh, support and source of, of wisdom and counsel to me uh, for a very, very long time. She has been a solid pillar at a time of need that just helped people like myself navigate very difficult situations because we knew that we had Dina Harrison next to us. Time and time again, she has paved the way and I think that will be something she's really remembered for. So you can't talk about mom and her ministry without acknowledging the role of my father. There is nothing that my mother has done that my father has not enabled, supported, or even bartended for. He has run the errands and schlepped my brother and me all over town and tried to cook. He has been there 100%. You know, a lot of people don't realize that my dad gave up a partnership in his CPA firm in Houston when they moved to Austin so she could go to seminary. And he completely started over and built a new practice he has been an incredible rock for her and for our entire family. And you can't recognize Dina without recognizing Larry. What is Dina gonna do in retirement? Well, Dina and Larry are going to be doing not much. They're gonna take a good long road trip in the RV and uh, they might come back in the near future, <laughs> we'll see. But I think that they're gonna enjoy their downtime. They're going to enjoy being together. I'm very excited for them to get to have that time. I wanna give thanks for the ministry of Bishop Dina Harrison in Texas over these many years. God bless you, Bishop Dina. 
I would like to thank you for being the strong woman that you are, for being a good example, for leading with dignity and kindness. It has really been a joy uh, to serve and to uh, count her as just an important uh, part of my own ministry, important part of the team of the diocese. She's a phenomenal woman, an incredible bishop, a very loving and caring priest, and I wish her all the best in her retirement. It's really sort of emotional for me to, to talk about. You know, I feel like I was blessed in sharing part of my journey of faith with her because she's just a magnificent child of God. So for that loyalty and grace and vision, uh, I will be eternally grateful. Throughout her journey in her ministry, she's always only been mom to me. And it's an honor to have shared her with the church. I know that many people have been blessed by her and her ministry, just like my family has. And I'm glad for that. The people of the Diocese of Texas, the Episcopal Church, and the Anglican Communion offer our profound thanks to Bishop Dina Harrison for her faithful and courageous ministry. God's church and our common life have been strengthened and enriched by the sacrificial offering of your gifts as bishop. We are grateful and we give thanks to God for you, Bishop Dina.